Hey guys, today we're gonna to talk about taxes. One thing that a lot of people don't realize is that taxes is one of your largest life expenses right up there with transportation and housing. So it's just natural to see that taxes will pay, play a big role in preventing your financial freedom. One of the most helpful mental exercises that I've heard of is think of everything that you purchase in terms of pre-tax money. So for example, let's say that you buy a car for $30,000. How much did that car actually cost you in terms of pre-tax money? Because first you had to have made that money and then you're taxed and then you could buy the car. So a car that cost $30,000 actually cost you $40,000 in terms of pre-tax money. When I heard of that, it just immediately clicked. It was like, holy shit, I pay so much in taxes. I need to figure out a way to reduce my taxes. And when it comes to the average guy, investing in stocks, if done correctly, is one of the easiest ways to save money on taxes. But before we get into that, just so we get a better understanding, let's talk about what we'll call the tax cycle when it comes to investing in stocks. There are four ways to get taxed through this tax cycle. The first way is before you even purchase a stock, you earn money through your job and then you get taxed. The second way is if you own a stock that pays a dividend, once you get paid that dividend, you get taxed. The third way is if you sell a stock for a profit, you get taxed. And then the fourth way is if you own stocks through certain tax advantage accounts, and then you withdraw money from those tax advantage accounts, you also can get taxed. So depending on the financial instrument that you use to save money on taxes, those financial instruments can help you in one or more ways through this tax cycle. The first financial instrument that I wanna talk about, probably the most simple one is the 401k. As of 2020, you could contribute up to $19,000 into your 401k on a pre-tax basis, and this doesn't include any employee matches that your employer gives you. So the way that it helps you on your taxes is that, like I said, you're contributing on a pre-tax basis, so any money that you earn through your job is put into your 401k without being touched by taxes. Also, even though you're probably only going to purchase index funds in your 401k, index funds also pay dividends, so any dividends that you earn through your index fund is also not taxed. Any money that you withdraw for your 401k is penalized if you withdraw it before the age 59 and a half. And you are taxed regardless if you're withdraw before 59 and a half or, or after 59 and a half. But the cool thing about 401ks is that you, there are a lot of exceptions on when you can withdraw your money without being penalized. I wouldn't recommend that you withdraw any money from your 401k before age 59 and a half, but the fact that there are exceptions on when you can withdraw money from your 401k and not be penalized makes the 401k more liquid and therefore more versatile. And you can read up on what the exceptions are on when you can withdraw from your 401k. Those exceptions include like qualified educational expenses for yourself or dependent. It includes uh, qualified medical expenses or the purchase of your first home. And there are other ones as well. The second financial instrument, which is probably my favorite financial instrument, I know I'm a weirdo, is the Roth IRA. And as of 2020, you could contribute up to $6,000 into your Roth IRA on a post-tax basis, but when you retire after age 59 and a half, you are not taxed on any withdrawals. And I don't know about you, but when I turn 59 and a half, I intend on being wealthy, so it'll be, be very beneficial to not be taxed because my tax rate will be very high at that point. So it'll be very beneficial not to be taxed uh, when I'm 59 and a half. One strategy that you can use through your Roth IRA is to purchase real estate investment trusts or REITs. One of the most unique things about REITs is that the REITs have to distribute over 90% of their profits in the forms of dividends to their shareholders. And as a result, the government doesn't tax any of those profits before they reach the shareholders. When you compare this to a regular company, usually what happens is that a company makes money and then the government takes a percentage of that 
of that profit through taxes. And then any money left over post-tax, a portion of that is distributed to their shareholders in the form of dividends. And then when it's distributed in the form of dividends, it's taxed again through the shareholders. This is commonly referred to as double taxation. These dividends that go through double taxation are called qualified dividends. And qualified dividends are taxed at a lower tax rate compared to just regular income. Where if you get dividends through a REIT, those dividends are called non-qualified dividends, which means those dividends are taxed at your regular income rate. But you could get around this by purchasing your REIT through your Roth IRA because any dividends that you receive through a Roth IRA is not taxed at all. So to me, investing in a REIT through a Roth IRA is one of the best ways to invest in real estate because you'll have some of the best people in the world managing your real estate. They're gonna take, take advantage of all the, all the tax write-offs that they can before they, they report any profits. Any profits are paid out to the shareholder without being taxed. And then as a shareholder, when you withdraw after 59 and a half, you are also not taxed. Another way that you can save on taxes through your Roth IRA is through the selling of your stock. And even though you can't withdraw your profits in your Roth IRA without being penalized before age 59 and a half, you can still sell the stocks within your Roth IRA as long as you don't withdraw it without being taxed. So usually there are two ways that you are taxed when you sell a stock. The first way is through short-term gains. And this happens when you sell a stock for a profit within one year. The second way is through long-term capital gains. And this is when you sell a stock for a profit after holding the stock for over one year. So you can do this by buying a stock within your Roth IRA and then selling it maybe a month later and not being taxed the short-term capital gains or even a year later or two years later and not being taxed the long-term capital gains. I did this myself through my Roth IRA where I bought Tesla. Most of my stocks were bought over a year ago. Some of them were bought this year, but I did end up selling way too early by the way, but I did end up making close to $100,000, increasing my net worth by close to $100,000 without being taxed. Another thing that I forgot to mention about the Roth IRA is that you can withdraw any principal from your Roth IRA without any taxes or penalty. So basically any money that you put into your Roth IRA, you can take out. So let's say that you with you contribute 10 years of, uh, of, of the max to your Roth IRA. So let's say $6,000 for 10 years. At the end of 10 years, you can withdraw $60,000 for any reason, for personal reasons, or to pursue another investment, tax-free, penalty-free. The next financial instrument that I wanna talk about is the HSA, Health Spending Account. Not to be confused with the FSA, Flexible Spending Account. They are both types of accounts where you can contribute on a pre-tax basis and spend that money on health-related expenses. But the HSA, once you contribute to the HSA, that money is yours, it rolls over year after year, where the FSA operates on a use it or lose it basis. In order to qualify for the HSA, you have to be enrolled in a high deductible healthcare plan and as of 2020, you can contribute as a single person up to $3,500 per year. The HSA is very similar to your 401k in that any contributions that you made towards your HSA is made on a pre-tax basis. And also you can purchase index funds. Sometimes you could purchase individual stocks through your HSA. It just depends on your employer, but you could purchase index funds through your HSA. But one thing that is different about the HSA is that you can withdraw from your HSA. And as long as those withdrawals are made to pay for qualified medical expenses, those withdrawals are not taxed and also not penalized. So you basically have like a quadruple tax advantage through investing in your HSA. Any contributions that you make are not taxed. If you have any dividends through your HSA, it's not taxed. When you sell, it's not taxed. And when you withdraw, as long as it's going towards qualified medical expenses, it's also not taxed. Like the 401k, the HSA also allows you to withdraw money out of the account after a certain age for any reason without penalty. With the 401k, the age is 59 and a half, but with the HSA, you can't withdraw until 65 in order to avoid the penalty. And the penalty for, for the 401k is 10%, while the penalty for the HSA is 20%. There are also none of the exceptions that are given to you by the 401k. Like for, with the HSA, you can't 
avoid the penalty by using the money towards purchasing your first house or using the money towards qualified educational expenses. But we're all gonna have medical expenses eventually in our lives. And as we get older, we're gonna have more medical expenses probably. So it makes sense to contribute the maximum to your HSA in order to take advantage of all these tax benefits. So if you're able to contribute the maximum to all three of these tax advantage accounts, your 401k, your Roth IRA, and your HSA, then congratulations, you're way ahead of the curve when it comes to your financial independence. You're probably on track to retire within 10 years. And if you have money even left over after that, then you should just invest through your regular taxable accounts. And even though you don't have the same tax advantages through your tax advantage accounts, you still have some tax advantages. The first advantage when it comes to just regular taxable accounts is that you get to harness the power of compound interest, meaning that if you don't sell, you don't get taxed on at least a capital gains perspective. So if you buy stocks, those stocks appreciate at let's say 8% a year. And as those stocks appreciate, your net worth is growing. And as long as you don't sell those investments, those investments are not taxed. Another advantage is if you make a somewhat low income, so if you're single, you make less than $40,000 per year, or if you are married and you make a combined income of less than $80,000, you pay a 0% federal income tax on dividends. And this also applies to long-term capital gains. You pay a 0% federal tax rate on that as well. Another great advantage of owning stocks through your regular taxable account is that you can write off up to $3,000 of stock losses per year. So if you have a stock that is not performing very well, you can sell that stock at a loss and reduce your taxable income by up to $3,000 per year. You can even buy back that stock. As long as you wait over 30 days, you can buy back that stock and still write off the $3,000 per year. And as a bonus tip, you can even purchase an index fund that owns that stock while you're waiting for the 30 days to go by. And after the 30 days goes by, you can sell that index fund and buy back your stock so that in the event that during those 30 days, your stock for some reason skyrockets, you don't have a ton of regret. So those are the main ways you can save money on taxes through investing in the stock market. So hopefully that was helpful to you and you learned something. I'm also thinking about making a video on how to save money on taxes through investing in real estate. So let me know if that'll be interesting to you. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.